Banks are coming on the live desk. So, yeah, that is the situation. The big talking point now is on the one hand, of course, police officers showing solidarity towards their, the guy who's been charged here. On the other hand, is this increasing the terror, terror threats to the general public by, by officers putting down their firearms? Well, the Met have now come out and said they've still got an armed response capability within London, albeit it is, it's significantly reduced, but they still have one. There's military support, so that that's been, and that's been in place for some time. It's been uh, practiced for some time now that if there is a terror attack, the police can call on the military to support any response to that. So that's almost like half of the course, really. It, it, it's nothing um, different there. If there should be a terror attack on London, there is military capability ready to respond to that and support the armed units that the Met currently have, albeit the Met's uh, armed response units are now significantly reduced because of this action. What do you make, Graham, of, of the right for armed police officers to step back from gun duty? Some comparisons being made on social media this morning, comparing it to strike action, questioning whether that should even be allowed for an armed police officer. What's your take on that? Police officers cannot go on strike legally. This isn't striking because it's not actually part of their... Part of their core role is to be a police officer. They are volunteers to carry a firearm. You volunteer to do it, you go through some significant training, and then you're deployed in a role with a piece of kit, which is a firearm. It's the same as if you're doing a police driver course. You're trained to drive police cars in a certain way. So it's part of your policing role. They are still police officers. They have just handed back their firearms um, for their duties because of concerns over the way legal decisions are being made. And this, is, this is, goes back to several other cases as well. It's not just this one specific case, which clearly we cannot discuss the facts around, but this isn't just about one case. This goes down to a lack of leadership and support from the senior managers when, when officers face these sort of situations. It comes down to leadership and also a fair and balanced way that officers' actions and decisions are then judged. They just want a system that's got integrity and it's fair and balanced to them. It actually takes account of the officers' decisions, their training, their guidance. If they follow that training and guidance, as they are told to do, what then happens to them? It comes down to having confidence in the system, and they clearly haven't got it at the moment, so they are looking at and reviewing their positions, firearms officers. And rightly so. It doesn't just impact on the officers. It also impacts on their families. Do you think, Graham, this is um, brought a broader symptom of... We've seen, for example, um, armed forces, troops from Northern Ireland or Afghanistan being prosecuted for, for historic wrongdoings. And when these cases come to light, there's a feeling very much amongst the armed forces, and no doubt perhaps now the police, that the, the officers or the armed forces uh, in general are kind of thrown to the wolves politically. Um, and this is kind of leaving them to kind of fend for themselves at a time, actually, when the rank-and-file officers just want pure leadership. Yes, it, it, it's similar. It's clearly not the same, but it is a similar sort of case and a similar um, mythology and, and decision making. That actually, all officers want, probably similar in the military, but all they want is their, their leaders to step up and say, mm. We are supporting this individual. While the investigation goes on, they have our backing. If they followed their if they have followed their training and guidance, they have our full support and backing. We will help them as much as we can within the confines of whatever investigation takes place. I've rarely heard any senior police officer come out and say that in, in many of the recent cases. So that's all they're asking for, some leadership and support, but also to have a system that treats them fairly, that treats them according to everybody else in law. Um, they're not asking to be uh, treated differently or be immune or whatever. They're just asking to have a fair and balanced hearing for the investigation to be done promptly because many of these cases take years to come to court. Mm. That is not fair on the officer, their families, or any victims and families of victims. It, it isn't fair on anybody involved. Mm. These cases take far too long to investigate and come to a conclusion. Well, Sir Mark Rowley has welcomed the Home Office review into armed policing, and he's talked about, uh, well, he suggested the need for more legal protections for armed officers. Is that something that you would support? What kind of legal protections would you like to see in place for armed police officers? I think what he's referencing to there, that the, the, his letter goes into some like legal technicalities about subjective decisions and objective decisions. I think what he's, what he's referring to there is... Criminal cases are judged on, on beyond all reasonable doubt. Mm. 
whereas civil cases and coroner's inquests go on the balance of probabilities. I think what he's asking for is some more clearly defined legal decisions and any decisions by the CPS or police conduct is based on that beyond all reasonable doubt, not on the balance of probabilities. Because then you're judging police officers on a, on a lower standard than members of the public would be in any sort of similar sort of circumstances. So I think that's what he's, he's almost referring to there. There's a number of factors he refers to in his letter. These have been asked for for years by police officers, including firearms officers. They go back to many other cases where we've asked for these reviews to be conducted. Other commissioners have said they would happen. It hasn't happened so far. This is almost like finally, we're not having this anymore. This actually needs to come into place now. This review needs to take place. And these, these safeguards, these, these uh, guidance needs to come into play. OK, Graham Weston, former Met police officer. We're going to have to leave it there. Thanks for joining us on the live desk. Mm -hmm. It's a tricky one, this, Ali. Really it really tricky. is. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, of course, um, you want solidarity, you want the rank and file to be protected. But the guy's been charged. The case hasn't reached a resolution. Mm -hmm. So some people are saying that the, the action seems um, premature. And then, of course, other people are concerned about the threat to the public. Yeah, of course, those kind of questions are being asked at the moment. It's very, very tricky. Uh, do let us know what you make of this. GBviews at gbnews.com.